bounces relatively high, he can move well on the court, and he can still get his serve through the court to get enough free points. But so can Federer. Just referencing back to Toronto. Murray talking about how he took on Federer that day, saying he was a lot more aggressive, didn't give Federer chances to dictate. Oh! And that has to be the attempted way today, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the aggressive is key. 30, and Murray has to be aggressive, force Federer into some difficult situations. Paul Anacone, no doubt a critical influence for Federer in playing some of his best tennis here this week. The Australian Open final was a moment I think Murray will learn from. Federer dictating play, pushing Murray around, and as well as Murray was playing, you can't lay back and be a defender in a championship moment. You have to take victory. As we know, now of uh, going back to number two in the world, but can he move alongside Nadal with uh, a record 19 Masters titles? Did I say 19? I meant 18. Murray, of course, with five of them. And the first chance to break through. Yeah, straight ahead attacking tennis. Well, it's tough to pull off against someone as good as Andy Murray. Federer paid the price. Federer and Murray takes the breakthrough and his decision to receive pays dividends. Federer will be disappointed with how that game finished out because he started it so strongly. A beautiful forehand winner. You sensed he was ready. But just a hint of not panic, but he pressed just a little bit there. Attacked on a ball that maybe he shouldn't have. Murray's taken full advantage of a couple unforced errors. Great start for the Brit. Leading the tournament in return games one prior to this final. And also leading the tournament in first serve points one with 86% in his first four matches. Murray, and the island in the blue, that little in the red, and a friend Danny in the grey there on the right. Well, Greg talked about Federer's forehand and how good and sharp it has been this week. And in the early goings here, his forehand has been misfiring.
Brilliant return of serve set up this finishing chance. Oh. Another strong serve and a very good hold of serve to back up the initial break. Just the start that Murray would have hoped for here. Well, Murray always known for his brilliant return of serve, and he can count on that part of his game to be clicking on almost every day that he steps on the court. But if he can serve like that, lots of first serves, hang on to his serve as well as he has done through the week, he's going to be a tough man to beat today. Missing with the forehand. I think of his first match of the week against John Isner. And uh, he just picked him apart and from the very start was hitting that top draw. But uh, at the moment, some way off it. nothing worse as a player coming out opening up a match and losing your serve I mean you get a little bit shell-shocked from having surrendered your first chance to get ahead Not only does it unnerve you, but it also gives your opponent confidence. And you can see Murray, he's ahead. He can swing freely. He can take chances like this. And the way he sets up, that could just as easily have gone up the line as cross court. And just as well. Looper into the backhand wing. Again, problems for him on that side, and problems now on serve with another break point for Andy Murray. but Federer had to play that well to get the better of it. And he did play it well. A couple of good forehands, first inside out and now inside in, and that was a good one. Pulled it with spin, angle, pace. Yeah. 
tough target to hit, just wide. Federer's first game, but Murray with the early advantage, 2-1. Murray is two games. Time. Pause for thought after the first three games. Strong start from Murray. Roger, not rattled, but certainly <laughs> shaken into a response in that last game. It was a good response and a, maybe a missed opportunity from Murray. He was pressing a little bit, wasn't he? And uh, Murray was nearly able to take advantage of that little edge that he had. And you have to feel as if Federer is a little fortunate just to be down the one break. And Barry, I guess this would be officially the first you know, time Federer has been behind in this tournament. Oh. Both these guys have been flawless. Neither has lost a set. Yeah, and that backhand down the line is going to be a key shot for Federer throughout his time with Paul Anacone throughout the next season as well because it just allows him to play into that open court and it brings the next ball back into his forehand where he can do so much damage. Inside the court when he played that, Federer far behind the baseline, perfect time for it and perfectly executed. Yeah, the drop shot is all about finesse and great hands, but it's an aggressive play. So Murray's thinking aggressively, his position was that inside the baseline. So you have to feel as if Murray's executing his game plan pretty well. He's kept the ball in play, kept it deep, stayed on neutral terms, and then has looked to gain the advantage in the rally. So he's so far got the mix just right. Evidence of the good things that can happen when Federer secures the backhand up the line. See, suddenly he's got a lot of court to work with, and he's got position in the court. Is that a pained expression because of something physically, or is it just the fact that it ended up in the net? I think all tennis players can relate to that pain when the net gets in the way of your best intentions. Straight forward backhand, but straight into the net and a shake of the head. Should have done better. Could have set him up for a couple of breakback points. urging himself to uh, win the game from here. First couple of matches against a uh, lowly opposition, he was uh, a little bit frustrated and uh, rather vocal. Calmed down when he took on Songer in the quarterfinals, and 